back here live at the Velocity Conference. This is SiliconAngle.com's The Cube. This is our flagship program. Mm -hmm. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and uh, this is the Velocity Conference. Again, our motto four years ago when we started SiliconANGLE was where computer science meets social science. That, in essence, sums up this show. You have DevOps meets UX design, everything in between. This is what is being defined as the modern infrastructure, the preferred developer experience, which then enables, ultimately, the best user experiences. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined on this segment, Jonathan LeBlanc, who's the head of developer evangelism in North America from PayPal. Thank Wel you very much welcome, for having me. Welcome to theCUBE. We'd love to get uh, uh, not only domain experts, CEOs, entrepreneurs in the cube, or tech athletes as we call them, mm -hmm. um, but anyone who's out there kicking the tires with developers, mm -hmm. helping developers, who also have written code, and you're one of those unique guys, right? You have yeah. that triple threat. Mm -hmm. um, so give us a sense of what's happening here at Velocity. Then I want to come in and ask some specific questions about some of the epic tweets that have been flowing around from your talk. <laughs> Sounds good. So, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, of what I've seen about Velocity, it's, it's amazing to see so many wide-ranging uh, topics on performance or really just best practices. That's what I've been noticing here. And in some of the, um, the office hours that I, that I was at, it started with just talking about API design, but going into wide realm topics like data mining and, and principles behind that. It's really amazing how you start with the overall uh, sense of performance and that leads you down some really nice paths to just whole other realms because you have such intelligent people all combined together. My uh, co-host is usually here, Dave Vellante, is in New York because he's got to get down to the MongoDB mm -hmm. event on Friday. Um, always says, you know, you know, is it a generalist or a specialist? And we always see, and we see in other disciplines, especially in IT, you know, the need for the generalist or you know, troubleshooting comes from a software generalist, mm -hmm. but yet, What's happening is, is that you're seeing integrated stacks, or right? you're seeing different stacks, no one stack for any particular you know, application. So, right. so generalist versus specialist, it's not that anymore. It's everyone is a both, it's a general specialist. <laughs> the full stack engineer is the new front end engineer. <laughs> yeah. The full stack engineer is the new front end engineer. And that's really where it's going. So let's talk about um, what, you're, what you're seeing at the conference. You mentioned on one of your tweets was 100 milliseconds um, in performance can be a shift of millions of dollars for customers. Right. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so I, definitely when you, when you have a five minute keynote, you're hitting on some key points now, but there's a, a clear um, basis for this. So what, what really what I mean by, by just a shift in latency is that when you have overall latency coming back from an API design where and you're incurring several hundred milliseconds of delay from an API that you're leveraging off of, what that relates back to is user perceived, uh, user perceived latency. So as the user perceives latency on the system, let's say they're buying a series of products and they're trying to check out, and they're, it looks like the system's just shutting down or, or taking a lot longer than it should, you see, start to see user drop off, and that's what we've seen a lot over, over uh, companies that have built on top of APIs, where if you have a slowdown in your system, you, you, you lose users. And as you lose users, those are directly relatable back to direct monetization, or direct mo yeah. money loss. I mean, latency is a huge deal. I mean, we're seeing it, I mean, we cover also some of the converged infrastructure markets, like where you got storage and you got flash, mm -hmm. and solid state is certainly changing the game, but that's not new to some of the uh, cutting edge developers. Mm -hmm. But Node.js has introduced something really interesting. You saw JavaScript really get, an, an, at the time, two years ago, and we covered the Node Summit, one of our first uh, years we had the Cube was, was our first season. Mm -hmm. Node Summit, no one's ever heard of the Node Summit. It's like, what is Node? But what that did was it opened up some headroom for JavaScript developers, and what that did is brought a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, what's your take of that, and do you see other examples where this creativity is being extended? Absolutely. Um, I, I, uh, first of all, in Node.js, right up my alley, and, and definitely something that I've been working on for uh, quite a while. Started with my Yahoo days prior to me joining PayPal, when I was working with some of the other evangelists there, uh, Tom Hughes Croucher, who, who wrote uh, uh, one of the first Node books with O'Reilly. Um, you know, up and running with uh, with Node, and uh, really focusing on on uh, some of those Node concepts. Now, since I joined PayPal, there's been some interesting projects going on there. Hasn't been full scale, but there's pockets of people like myself that will, love working on these uh, newer technologies, newer languages that are out there, and a lot. It scares off a lot of people that it hasn't hit a 1.0. 
Um, it scares off a lot of overall companies where, where yeah. you're, go you're going to that level, but then you have um, eBay building out products like Q uh, Qlio, QL.io, um, <clears throat> to, to uh, be a data mashup engine for APIs. That mechanism is reminiscent of uh, other projects like uh, um, you know, YQL on the Yahoo stack or, or FQL on the Facebook stack for its own data. Just a, a, a simple querying language system. Yeah, it's like bring your own stack to work kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, hey, BYOS B, B, uh, and beer too, if you're going to bring your own beer. <laughs> of course, in the developer like realm you yeah, have to. <laughs> yeah, beer is the number one. Actually, beer and tea, we found through our social data mining application that we built is that the preferred drink of choice for developers is beer and tea. Together? No, no, you're either one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe in the morning tea if you can sort of throw it, but uh, uh, we didn't get into the, uh, the other vices of developers. But, but you know, beer and tea, they're a little bit polarized, you know, right. and there are a lot of dads too. So just kind of, you know, add some free, valuable market research out there. Absolutely. Um, but you know, this stack conversation is really relevant because that is a trend of DevOps, right? You know, you're building something and creating that, that stack, it's really the integration story because it used to be, hey, that group did that over there, I did that over there, that UX team, well, you know, that's not really plugged in. Mm -hmm. So there's a people issue. Right. There's also just integration, the confluence of what DevOps became, which was you know, net, net operations and developer. But now you extend that out to the UI with mobile, it creates much more of a different dynamic. Yeah. What are you seeing with that extension? So DevOps we've covered, it's pretty well documented what right. that means. But you add UX into that, this trade-off, so people holistically looking at the design criteria of these systems, small scale which then, and or large scale, mm -hmm. that usually wasn't the norm. No. So what are you seeing there? Uh, so what, I, what I'm seeing personally on the, on the front, front end realm or on the UI realm is a uh, proliferation of JavaScript projects coming out that ha have to do with everything from uh, overall visualization frameworks or uh, things like D3, for, uh, D3JS for instance, for visualizing data. You have uh, mechanisms like, uh, like Bootstrap coming out, of course, on the, on the uh, UI front. Then there you get some nice lightweight approaches for uh, on the UI side for really building out um, kind of a uh, data UI separation, but in a lightweight approach like mustache templating. That's one of my favorites uh, w because it's so lightweight where you can just dump in a lot of data from your uh, from your overall server in infrastructure into your, your front end and keep them separate at the same time. Uh, I'm seeing every project known, known to man coming out on, on JavaScript where my Twitter stream is just filled with new like 20 new JavaScript projects every day. And that's really what you're seeing and I think uh, Node.js is uh, has really given a little bit of lifeblood back into the JavaScript community. Did you see your live scripting uh, session? Did I you see what did. they're doing with O'Reilly doing live scripting? I, I love you, that. Did uh, you see that? Well, who was the woman that was doing that again? Nata I think it's Natalia. I think. Hold right. on, let me find out who it is. I mean, she's the one tweeting it. Y yeah, yeah. I have those tweets from her. I you know, and they've just been amazing. That's the first time that anyone's ever done something like that for me. And I I plan on printing them out and putting them in in my cube at at work because it's. Uh, they're just amazing. Because there's yours right there. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, and it's great because she captured all of the main key points of the talks. Yeah, uh, I, I, whoever's doing that live sketching, they got to say that's brilliant. Um, keep doing it and send the images to SiliconANGLE, our CUBE team. We'll put them up on, on the, uh, the live stream because it's really awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I love, I love illustrates, I love pictures, very sticky, very viral. Absolutely. Um, so, oh, you know, shout out to the live, uh, live, live, uh, uh, and I think she got my head shine very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> nice eyebrows. I appreciate uh, okay, that. Okay, so getting back to the uh, you know, system layering. Okay, this summarizes your whole talk, right? right. But uh, you know, you know, one of the things that encapsulates legacy systems was kind of a key theme. Mm -hmm. Obviously, through the live sketching, we see that. But but let's talk about legacy, right? Because you mentioned that in PayPal, right? Mm -hmm. There's always the, the naysayers. And I don't want to say naysayers in the sense of blocking innovation. They're ops guys. I want to see 1.0 baked out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there's that that level of hurdle. Mm -hmm. Has right. that hurdle dropped over the years and, and, is, and, is, and what is accelerating from the bottoms up? Because you always have that top down, bottom up, you know, and then meeting in the middle. Right. Um, this community obviously is growing very rapidly, organically, mm -hmm. um, so organizations are going to start to see more rise. So right. what, what do you see that bar? What's the hurdle for, for sure. adoption? Sure, absolutely. So uh, when I first started in the industry and people were working with a lot of the uh, server-side infrastructures, you would have uh, the people that were engineering these systems in kind of a closed box where they would just do it based on pragmatic approaches to API design. And they would do it just because it was the proper way to do it and building out the perfect system for themselves and for their company. 
But that was the time when I first started working in developer evangelism and what I was seeing was we were trying to work as a bridge within the companies and they would, they would typically uh, put us on, a, on, on the back burner. Now within PayPal, we're really seeing the, those different changes in the industry where the evangelism teams, the bridges into the company are becoming a, uh, a cornerstone towards all the effort that's being done. And in doing so, developers are beginning, becoming the cornerstone. What the development community wants to see from an API leads to the redesign of the API. That leads to our roadmap. It leads to all the changes in the industry. So our developer community, the people that are building on our APIs are the ones who are driving our APIs. You know, I, you know, I got to just say, I mean, one of the things, you know, us geeks talking about, well, you're more geekier than I am, but <laughs> you're encoding away. I haven't coded in years, but <laughs> the, the, the API service layer is the future. This is the fastest mm -hmm. way to do things. It's the way to build the Lego block model. Everyone wants that the dream, you know, frameworks is to have things work great, cohesively, and decoupled, right? So, right. you know, that's system architecture 101. Yep. So, let's take this to another level. So. Consumer side, no problem. Everything's cranking along. All the pioneers in web ops and dev ops are cranking up Facebook, Google, Twitter, all the web scale companies. But let's go back to the IT guys. Mm -hmm. You know, go back 15 years, corporate IT has just not been an innovative marketplace. Has not. I mean, they're no. cutting people. <laughs> you know, outsource yeah. the help desk as first goes. Then you mm -hmm. got, you know, next thing you know, they got four guys who are project managing and then no real resources. Yep. And now all of a sudden, boom, cloud, mobile. Elastic resources like Amazon, like environments, and APIs. Now there's an effort to rebuild mm -hmm. more developers. So unlike the mainframe days when you had the spaghetti code developers, right. just pumping out tons of code and no documentation for job security, you know, the old story. You now have the ability to really ramp up. So there's a lot of focus on IT to do this right now. Right. So from a rebooting perspective or reinvention of IT, what do you see, what would you share with folks out there watching? Either CIOs or head of development, in some you know, insurance company, corporate enterprise, where they want to be more like PayPal. Yeah. I mean, PayPal's their own IT, so you have some insight into that, but, but these companies don't have the DNA to just turn up DevOps, right. or turn up Agile with mobile and web. And this, so this that's a challenge. So I want to ask you your perspective on that, your well, advice to those guys. Absolutely, so I, I've chatted with a lot of people here and this is something that I've dealt with a lot uh, over the years and it's a specific reason why I'm a heavy adv advocate for open source projects and contributions. Because the people behind a lot of these open source projects or even these, uh, these open projects, uh, take uh, Speedy for instance, uh, you know, on, the, on the Google side, you know, it's an attempt to, to change things towards a, a more latent, uh, latency centric web. Um, where your your main focus is towards reducing latency, and you know things like that, or on the open source uh, source software realm, working with OAuth or uh, you know OpenID Connect, working with these mechanisms on an open source realm gives uh, developers without those resources the leg up to to actually uh, build out something comprehensive, build out something really innovative in the industry and uh, and current because yeah. they have all the developer resources from many different companies all contributing back to these because they feel passionately about it. Yeah, but the problem with open source on the IT, not, there's no problem with open source, we're big advocates of open <laughs> source, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Scale out commodity hardware and scale out open source has changed the, the industry, but now you start to get into compliance issues, right? You know, you work at PayPal, you know a little about yes. that. Uh, but IT guys, ANSI compatibility for Hadoop, I got these are things that just aren't, that's a white space, small little, no, it's not, yeah, no one's proactively doing that, so you're starting to see corporate guys having to get involved. So yep. there's a mandate there. Absolutely. Um, but yep. still, that's, that needs faster. That needs to happen faster. It's, it's a foundation. Open source is a foundation. That's what it gives you. It gives you this, the starting blocks to build upon. And that's how it should always be treated because no, there's no silver bullet in any industry. It's always going to be uh, a, a series of trade-offs and, and when you're building out any product. And I also got to say, you said you're into social technologies. One, you know, we're actually doing our own uh, social platform that we've built, hasn't been released yet, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, OAuth is amazing, right? I mean, OAuth Agreed. really adds a lot of value when you want to come in and get credentials mm -hmm. and provide a, a personalized user experience. And then, you know, back to Node, you know, you got the server side ability to do low latency IO centric things, right. and then you need context. Mm -hmm. So OAuth has been a great uh, uh, thing there. What other areas do you see in the social space that's really compatible with cloud and mobile 
what, what technologies are out there that you see or you're watching? Mm -hmm. So a lot of my realm besides uh, in social are around the same focus as around uh, data personalization and data mining. Uh, it's a scary topic out there yep. because the problem is it's an intellectual pursuit. It's not necessarily a problem, a problem in and of itself, but you have a lot of people that are t finally taking a lot of the data that has been mined over the years and they're saying, well, can I actually build a personalization engine for the uh, for someone based on this? Can I actually learn X or Y about a person based on this uh, the, uh, this massive quantity of data, these terabytes of data that I have? Um, and the short answer is most of the time, yes. Yeah. The, and the problem is that uh, that's it's early days too. I mean, this whole prism thing's blown out. Well, it's blown mm -hmm. out of proportion at two levels. One. The Fourth Amendment is really legit. We need to protect that. But at the Agreed. same time, it's early days, big data. And you know, I was in New York and all this hubbub on prison. I'm like, if you could give up all your mail for a year mm -hmm. and everyone snoop you, would you do that and, and take back the Twin Towers? Everyone says yes. Mm -hmm. So there's weirdness around, okay, big data is early. We need to watch the government. Certainly got to have transparency there. Policies, F FUBAR, beyond, you can even imagine this policy makers don't know anything about mm. tech, so, so that's a problem, right? right? And the Fourth Amendment needs to be preserved. So Absolutely. again, too controversial for me to even come <laughs> to talk about other than saying those things. <laughs> but that is a big issue, the data, personal data. So this is something that I've actually been talking about at several conferences in the past. I talk about data mining, but whenever I talk about data mining and personalization, it always comes back to a simple topic. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. There has to be, since it is an intellectual pursuit, we lose face with that we're actually f focusing on human beings here. Yeah, yes. And we're f focusing on some, uh, some core integral parts of, of who they are as people that they might want not want to expose. Yeah, yeah. And that's the problem, just because... A scientist works on a nuclear weapon doesn't make them evil, but they're intellectually satisfied by the pursuit of excellence in science, Absolutely. yet the destructive nature of that is an example. That's your point. That is my point, yeah. yeah. Data mining is at that, that infancy now where, it, where yeah. you, there's going to be a lot of mistakes made in the industry before any, there's any sort of regulations or standards in well, place. Well, I'm totally, I'm totally aligned with you on that. Mm -hmm. We're on the same page, Jonathan. Share with the folks out there coordinates. Um, obviously, you're a, a real great thought leader in that area, as well as doing some great work for PayPal. Mm -hmm. Share the, with the folks your, your Twitter address and your blog and whatnot. Um, everything, basically, uh, all my accounts online are under uh, JC LeBlanc, my last name, L-E-B-L-A-N-C. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, slide share a lot of yeah. my um, um, vid previous videos. Uh, so basically, everything's on there. My, my site address is jcleblanc.com. My blog is at nakedtechnologist.com. Um, and that's where you can find basically everything on me. We have your card, so we will get you back on SiliconANGLE. We have a, a morning, we have a Skype program, we bring people in, we'd love to get your thoughts. Uh, great thought leader, real big contribution to open source, mm -hmm. and again, you're doing great work. We really appreciate your time coming on theCUBE. This is siliconangle.com, it's theCUBE. Go to siliconangle.com for all the news stories around tech. We go in deep dive, go to wikibon.org for free research. We are open source content. We run no advertising on our site other than promoting the velocity events that we go to with theCUBE. Uh, we're, all, we're all data driven, as we mm -hmm. say. So uh, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>